print shifting for odd reasons, a Delta printer that's having a bad day, and there are just some times where listening to people on the internet is not a good thing to do. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 131, from a guy on the internet. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you are struggling getting your 3D printers back to printing with purpose, we want to help you. If you need any help getting your 3D printers running, you can reach out to us on all the social medias. Use the hashtag printfix, slide into those DMs, or email us directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. We'd love to be able to help you get your printers back to running the way they freaking should, rather than getting upset at them. We got some interesting ones for you today, as well as a bit of a PSA about things not to do because there are some great things to 3D print, then there are some wonderfully not good things to 3D print. Let's dive right into it. First up, we have Clipper Layer Adhesion. Hey everyone, I upgraded my SV06 Plus to Clipper. Hey, that's a great mod for the SV06 Plus. At the weekend, using the Bassam Mantor? Sure. Guide and Slicer Profiles. The first print came out perfectly. However, multiple subsequent prints have shown this behavior. Layer 1 slow prints well, and as soon as the machine speeds up, it starts behaving as shown in the photo. Check the Z-axis rotation calibration. It is perfect, and slowing the print down via mainsail interface doesn't seem to help. Any suggestions would be welcome. Thank you. Heat. You need more heat, brother. You are dealing with not enough heat, and sure, you can actually cut your speed down quite a bit and still be running too fast. Remember, clipper or any input shaping in general can unlock double, triple, or even quadruple the speeds that you're used to. And if you're already getting pretty close to maxing out the flow rate of your hot end, you can either choose to keep slow on your prints or up your temperature to basically improve hot end flow. You could look at upgrading to more of a CHT style nozzle, but then you have to deal with the fact that the SV06 Plus doesn't use a real volcano style hot end, and there's a whole bunch of BS involved in that. But realistically, if you just turn up your temps a little bit, it should be okay. And we can see that dropping the speed by 50% did help. There were still subtle hints of poor adhesion, and they changed the nozzle, and it seemed to be back to printing the way that it was. So I think they pushed it too hard with the speed factor to 175% on an already clipper profile and gummed up the nozzle or something like that. While it's not impossible that you could gum up a nozzle, I think it's more realistic that changing out to a fresh nozzle isn't going to hurt anything, but it's likely not going to help either. You might have had some extra crud in there and chances are most of us do but the vast majority of 3d printers are not going to run into an issue where that small little bit of gunk in the nozzle will matter it can matter quite a bit when you're trying to flow much faster than your hot end is capable of and it will act as basically extra friction inside of that hot end where traditionally where the material is already molten it's not that big of a deal but when it's still in that semi-solid non-newtonian level of fluid if you will, then yeah, that little bit can matter. If you are running, let's say 205 to 210 for PLA, try 215, 220, 230. On our Chidi, on the Bamboo, on any of the machines that we have that run Input Shaper, Clipper, or that we just absolutely beat the crap out of because we can, we like to run hot on the materials. And while, yes, that can cause stringing, you'll absolutely see some issues faster when we're dealing with things like somewhat damp filament and things like that, it does guarantee pretty darn good layer adhesion. Because when you overheat materials, to a certain extent, obviously if you go too hot, you start to burn it. But when you go above that ideal and before the burn stage, you can get really, really strong prints without sacrificing a lot of detail. You just have to do a little bit of extra cleanup at the end. In some cases, I believe that is perfectly worth it. So we got some interesting print shift issues from a Patreon Discord member, JK Designs. Remember, if you want to come hang out with us on our super secret Discord, you can join via Patreon, PayPal, or YouTube channel members via the links in that description down below. And hey, while you're down there, leave a like and get subscribed. It costs you nothing, helps the channel grow, and allows us to get more sponsors to help us go to shows and bring you guys coverage that, well, nobody else is really playing around with. So JK Designs here is working with an interesting bit of a problem. They're doing some flow test designs, pressure advance, and all that goodness. Here we can see some 
layer shifting. We've got a few different photos of it occurring here. And from my perspective, we have driver failures. I initially started with that we have an issue with our belts and pulleys. But after talking with JK Designs, we had some follow-up here. The speed test macro was super valuable, which was great. That helps you figure out what you can do with a printer, at what speeds you can run it, why you can run it, what accelerations. We actually recently did that on our Magneto X and got some pretty insane numbers, like 1,250 millimeters a second travel at 30k XL. For reference, that's ridiculous for a machine that has an over two pound axis that it needs to move like that. And so after they went through, did that test, they had recently replaced the Octopus with a Leviathan that uses 48 volts for the X and Y steppers with the 5160 stepper drivers. After testing and lubricating the X, Y axis, re-racking, retesting, they had to lower the printer's max velocity from 300 to 150. In addition to layer shifting, they were getting god-awful sounds on the MGN-12 carriage block, which was rubbing up against a rail. What they don't know just yet, if they indeed have one or two bad stepper motors, or if that is a normal thing to do since they are getting more amperage. I thought more amps would allow for more torque, but wouldn't impact speed. Am I mistaken in that? It's not actually about the amperage here. We're looking at wattage. If you go from 24 volts to 48 volts and you leave your amperage at two amps, you now go from 48 watts to 96 watts. And that's a big difference. That's why a lot of people go to these higher voltage stepper drivers because you can push more wattage with the same style cables. We've got multiple issues. Initially, I said we can see that, that the damage is occurring in one direction, but it's not 100%. We can see here that this is just occurring in the X. This is at a 45 from X and Y. And even then, it's not 100% consistent. And so this could be wiring. It could be an issue with your ball bearing starting to fail. But having to go down from even 300, which is pretty slow for a Voron Core XY style printer, down to 150 for your Rapids, that still doesn't seem right. Repacking the bearings is a great move. I would check to make sure that your rails are aligned properly because if anything is dragging on anything else, it is absolutely going to cause issues. These prints don't take very long either. I would absolutely be watching them the entire time to see how these failures are occurring, when they're occurring, and if you could hear or see anything that tells you what might be going on. That's the big deal here. We want to really find evidence. We need evidence of what is occurring and why. If we don't have that evidence, then we're kind of flying blind. Having more evidence for what is occurring can help people like me or people like any of you down in the comments who might want to help this guy out as well to find that right problem. I will say I can see some other issues with extrusion, but I have a feeling this is part of this actual test. A grain of salt that, of course. But yeah, you should not be having these bad of issues when we're talking about shifting for layers, especially when I don't see any curling or anything where the nozzle could slam into it. In fact, I, I see a machine that is honestly doing a great job dealing with completely blank overhangs. And so because this did happen after a pretty major shift, which was going from the Octopus to the Leviathan and moving over to the CAN bus system, which is the EBB 361.2 on their 2.4, I do worry that this could also be potentially wiring problem and i don't want to chase wiring gremlins wiring gremlins suck to chase down can bus while it does make it so much easier because it's now one ish cables going to the hot end it makes it more difficult because now you have a lot of small cables going to the can bus system and if anything has the potential to wiggle loose yeah it becomes a bit of a nightmare just like this cat who likes to keep interrupting me when I'm trying to film. And if you want to see all the behind the scenes content, we are now going to be releasing an entire video once a month of all the behind the scenes cat interactions that occur here on the channel. So if you do want to see that, make sure to support us financially on any of the platforms of your choice because Victoria is awesome, likes to make cameos, but they don't always make it into the final cuts. Although, uh, I don't know. I'm feeling particularly zesty. We'll take one of the little cuts from today and add it in at the bloopers, which is the last thing in the video, which if you didn't know, 
it's because you didn't watch the videos all the way through. There are times where 3D printing is appropriate, and there are times where it is not. This comes from user Loyal Moses, who says 3D printing is awesome. I need a propane regulator fixed, but didn't have time myself. I tasked my son with grabbing some Sane Smart TPU and using Tinkercad to print a new gasket on the Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus. 20 minutes later, he texts me the installed pic. While I am very happy that he tasked his son with the project, the son did the project, and he made the part and it looks great. There is under no circumstances, there's zero. This is dangerous. This can cause a gas leak. This can cause loss of property, loss of life. And if I was your insurance carrier, I would be coming out to do an inspection because my God, this is unsafe. I understand that at this point he's done it to get the attention because the 24 quote tweets, most of them saying, don't do this, don't do this. Um, you know, loyal talking about the 3D printing 2A people and then saying, go outside and touch some grass. This is very, that's a very bit of toxic language, by the way. We have another person saying, don't do this. And like, I get it. I get that if you have nothing else you have nothing else and you need propane this is better than not having an o-ring but this is irresponsible it is just irresponsible there are better ways to do this like ordering the part going to town and getting the part if you don't have the time to do it then we need to evaluate where it stands in the process of your day we'll say Print looks great, TPU's nice and dry, but considering that is snow on the ground, I am not surprised. Where it does snow, I am told it gets incredibly dry, so you guys don't have to deal with the crazy high humidity that we do here in Florida. And I will tell you, it is low humidity right now for me, because it is 78 degrees and 44% ambient. Yes, 44% ambient inside is low. And sure, this was a quick fix, you needed it for 10 minutes, that's one thing. If you needed this to last for 10 hours, 10 days, 10 weeks, 10 months, 10 years, absolutely 100% not go get a Buna and O-ring, go get the actual part that it is made for. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. 3D printing is not appropriate for everything. So I get it, it's a cool use, but there should be a disclaimer here that states, do not do this, it is irresponsible, you could hurt yourself and or others. It's the same thing that I say when we talk about recalls, especially when we talked recently about the Bamboo Lab A1 recall, which we will card to, which, huh, it was the same user that leaked those emails. Hmm, I doubt there's correlation there. Seriously, I doubt there's correlation there. This really should carry a, this is irresponsible. This is more of a proof of concept and a challenge, not a necessity. And if you showed me that this was a proof of concept and a challenge for, you know, a, a kid, I'm all for it. But it is being positioned as if it is being used as a solution for a problem dealing with deadly gas that is highly explosive versus a fun project for a kid. And so I think if we looked at adjusting the verbiage here, I would think that we have a better chance of this succeeding. Now, mind you, it did exactly what he wanted it to. It got an ass load of attention. So uh, if you're trying to, you know, become internet famous, this is a great way to do it, but it's not the right way to do it. So there are some times where listening to people on the internet is a smart move, and there are times like this where it could not only hurt you, it could hurt those around you, and ultimately, the person responsible here is him. Don't do this. Be smart. And if this is an issue that you've had more than once, carry spare parts. If you live in the north where it gets cold, Boona and O-ring kits are cheap as chips keep them handy. Just replace it. Hell, replace it every couple of months out of basic preventative maintenance. It's easy. We've got a pretty upset Delta printer here. That is, well, it's got better dance moves than I have. This Delta printer has had some bad days. And those of you that have dealt with Delta printers before can probably detect exactly what this is. So I don't know what specific Delta printer this is. And I'm sure the Delta printer aficionados are going to be yelling at me in the comments, which is great for, you know, viewer retention, metrics, and uh, letting the overlords know that more people should be fed this video. So please 
correct me, but this is because the system uses magnets and balls to hold the end effector on. The end effector is the hot end fan combo and all of that that is at the end of the delta arm itself. That is what is called the end effector. When those ball and socket joints break and they're just held together with magnets, this is what happens. Easy way to fix this is to make sure they don't come apart. But we see this most commonly in deltas when they don't have enough Z hop and they're dealing with parts that don't have enough cooling. So they warp or it's just over extreme for some reason and runs into things. Obviously, keeping a better eye on your part will keep this from happening more regularly. But it is one of the downsides trying to make deltas more weight efficient. Because the lighter a delta can be, the more efficient it can be and the faster that it can print. And the magnet ball and socket joint is a great way to reduce that kind of weight. But it has the bit of a pain point of literally having your failure mode being the magnet stop working. Whether that's because the printer runs into something. This is the equivalent of skipping a step for a regular 3D printer, but it is an infinite skip step. It never stops skipping steps anymore. But according to the stepper motor, it's running just fine because the stepper motor doesn't know that something was going on. So even if you had closed loop stepper drivers, the chances of your printer knowing that something is wrong is pretty low here. While this looks kind of hilarious and, you know, printers getting all wiggly on us here, moving its hips. Are those hips lying? Shakira would be the right one to ask. Unfortunately, I don't have her number. Otherwise, we could call up and ask her. <laughs> But as far as I'm concerned, put those magnets back on and life will be good. You could look at changing over to a more locking style connector for the end effector. But honestly, I think some small settings changes like adding more Z hop, slowing it down, adding better cooling, depending on how that failure mode occurred, would all eventually equal a better print over. Let me know if you guys have ever dealt with something like this down in those comments below. And I would love to know your thoughts on the Loyal Moses propane tank thing. I am here for doing practical 3D printing and utilizing 3D printing in the day-to-day -day lives of myself and others around me. But I'm not about to do it on mission-critical items like O-rings that keep gas leaks from occurring. So I'd love to know your guys' thoughts down below below. And the thoughts I've already heard come from all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you all do for making these videos possible because you guys all talk to me about that Loyal Moses fail because I was not the first one to post it in our Discord, but we did have a long talk about how to properly go about it. So thank you guys for being awesome and doing what you do to keep these videos coming every single week. Don't forget, we're here to help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. So, you know, reach out. Hey, a couple of bucks in that creator fund never hurt either. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series. Right next to that will be my live stream where we tested my P.O. Poly Magneto X to failure. I think you guys will enjoy that one. It's a little bit long, but we had a lot of fun and it involved me holding on to my table for dear life as we started to test the limits of what that printer was able to do. But that's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. No, we can't eat the flowers. <laughs> we cannot eat the flowers. I'm going to get my phone because your mother is going to love this.